Simscape Electrical is used in a wide range of industries and applications. We will take a look at an actuation system. An actuation system attempts to track a speed profile. A DC motor drives a worm gear via a lead screw. The speed controller is implemented as an analog circuit and it is connected to a motor servo amplifier that controls the voltage applied to a DC motor. Here you can see a portion of the Simscape electrical model, including the motor, the drive circuitry, and a portion of the analog circuit that implements the speed controller. To ensure that this model yields realistic behavior, you can enter parameter values directly from data sheets. You can also use this model to evaluate thermal effects. How does the change in the behavior of the components as they heat up affect overall performance? And we can assess the effects of hardware implementation. How do nonlinearities in the sensor affect overall system behavior? Simscape Electrical is used to select motors and drives, evaluate circuit architectures, and design control systems, including hardware in the loop testing. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see what this looks like. Here is the model of our linear electric actuation system. A DC motor drives a lead screw through a worm gear. At 3 seconds, a load is applied to the lead screw, and the control system attempts to accommodate for that. On the scope, we can see the speed of the system, including the effect of the disturbance. The pink line is the, sen is the exact speed of the motor, and the yellow line is the speed as reported by the sensor. If we look at our model, we can see how the DC motor was parameterized. Here you can see we have chosen to parameterize it using equivalent circuit parameters. We could have specified stall torque and no load speed, or rated power, rated speed, and no load speed. These are all values commonly found on data sheets, and having options allows us to pick the one for which we have the best information. If we look at the control circuit, we can see that the, con the speed controller was implemented as an analog circuit, using band-limited op-amps, resistors, capacitors, and other components. The current controller was also implemented as an analog circuit. You can see the same components here. The effect of hardware implementation is also captured. Here we have an incremental shaft encoder, which is what is used to sense the speed of the motor and provides the signal that is given to the speed controller. We saw on the scope that there are delays and quantization effects from this sensor, so we can use Simscape Electrical to determine the impacts of those effects on overall system behavior. Our motor driver has been implemented in two ways. We have an abstract model of our driver circuit. We have a controlled PWM voltage and an H-bridge. The H-bridge applies the voltage to the DC motor. Both of these blocks have been configured to run in averaged mode. In averaged mode, the voltage applied to the DC motor varies smoothly from zero to the supply voltage. We can configure these components to run in pulse width modulated mode. When it runs in pulse width modulated mode, The voltage that is applied to the DC motor is a pulse width modulated signal. The width of the pulse varies with the magnitude of the duty cycle. Using this, we can see the effects of pulse width modulation on system performance. The other variant of our drive circuit has much more detail. If we click on this, we will configure the motor driver circuit to use a full circuit implementation. We have used opto isolators and MOSFETs to model the entire H bridge. This is a much more detailed model and would allow us to explore even further detailed effects of the drive circuitry. We are now using a MATLAB script to rerun the simulation with this more detailed variant and produce a plot that will show us a little bit more about the behavior in the system. Here we can see the plot of the voltage applied to MOSFETs on one side of the H-bridge. We can see that both are conducting at the same time, which results in a power spike. These are in, this is information that the circuit designer and the algorithm designer would like to know so that they can try and avoid this power spike or determine its impact on the system. We can also include thermal effects. If I right click on this block and go to the block choices option, I can enable a thermal port. Here you can see an orange port which allows us to represent a thermal network. By typing in heat transfer, quick insert allows me to insert a convective heat transfer element, so I could include the effects of heat transfer to the environment in my system model. Enabling this effect also includes an additional tab for, dependent, for temperature dependence. This allows me to modify the behavior of the motor based on the temperature of the motor itself. 
In this example, we have seen the many different aspects of how we can use Simscape Electrical to model a mechatronic system. Simscape Electrical can also be used in automotive applications, such as hybrid electric vehicles. In hybrid electric vehicles, a number of different kinds of systems come together, including electrical motors, generators, batteries, and combustion engines. Simscape Electrical can help you model this system. You can use it to test for integration issues between these different subsystems, design the control logic, and to optimize system level performance, such as maximizing fuel economy. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see what this looks like. Here is our model of a hybrid electric vehicle. The electrical system has been modeled using Simscape Electrical, including the motor, generator, DC-DC converter, and the battery. The model of the motor and the generator abstracts the torque speed behavior of the motor and the motor driver. This enables a very rapid simulation, ideal for system level testing. The battery model has been modeled as a generic model, which can be parameterized to match many different chemistries. If you would prefer to create your own model of a battery, you can use Simscape components to create an equivalent circuit model, or you can use Simscape language. With Simscape language, you can implement your own equations directly and specify the exact behavior you would like to have. The model of the electrical system has been connected to a mechanical model of the vehicle dynamics modeled in Simscape driveline. Here you can see the vehicle dynamics, the tires, differential, and other components. This is connected to the control system. The control system includes a model in state flow that models the logic that controls which mode the hybrid electric vehicle is in. Simulink has been used to model the controller for the engine speed, generator, motor, and battery charge controller. When we run the simulation as a, syst as a system level model, it runs very quickly. This is a plot of the vehicle speed as it runs through a standard drive cycle. This is about three minutes worth of simulation, which runs through very fast. We can look at the scopes to analyze some of the other behavior in the system. We can see the temperature of the DC-DC converter as it climbs during the simulation, and we can see the voltages on the DC bus and on the battery. If we would like to look at more simulation results, we can use the Simscape Results Explorer. The Simscape Results Explorer stores all of the simulation results from the Simscape network, and you can explore it in a tree browser. If we go back to the, the motor, model of the motor, and look at the results, we can see the speed it was running at, the current, the power dissipated voltage, and other aspects of the simulation results. This model of the hybrid electric vehicle incorporates many different subsystems and can be used to detect integration issues and design the control system.